Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Dr. Mensa Odebill turns 50, and we're thinking about all the smart things he's learned in his life. From hugs with family to big wins, every moment teaches us something important. Life's like a big song. We're all different, but we're all singing together, even when things get tough. Life's a mix of good times and tough ones, but together, they make a beautiful picture. Let's remember the things Dr. Mensa Odebill's learned. They can light up our way to a better future. Number 38, to stay ahead, I must always think ahead. To stay ahead, I must always think ahead. Think of future possibilities. Normally, when I make a plan, I think about three or four other alternatives. I never think of one thing at a time. I think about four. If it doesn't go this way, this is what I'm going to do. If it doesn't go that way, that's what I'm going to do. If I get this response, I'm going to turn this way. I don't just make one plan and hope it will work because things don't always work the way you plan them. When your plan leaves the paper and hits the ground, it will meet obstacles. So think ahead. Think of alternatives. Think of plan B, plan C, plan D. If it doesn't work this way, what else do you have? Many times I talk to people and they tell me a nice, brilliant plan and I say, what if this problem occurs? They say, well, you know, I haven't thought about that. Or they will say, well, when we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. You are at the bridge, cross, cross it. <laughs> or some will say, well, we are trusting God, there'll be no problem. You sure? You have to make alternative plans. Think ahead. Think of things that could go wrong. Don't, all, don't think with the best case scenario. Always plan with the worst case scenario. Think about anything that could go wrong and plan with that in mind. If you do that, you minimize your failures and increase your success rate because you've thought through issues properly. To stay ahead, you must always think ahead. Think of problems before they occur. Number 39. When I postpone inevitable choices, I pay dearly for them later. When something needs to be done and I say, oh, you know, I wouldn't want to do it. I'll hurt his feelings. I, oh, let me not talk about it. Later, it will backfire big time. You will make that decision, but by the time you make that decision, the price tag is very, very high. If it's a choice, it's inevitable. Nothing is going to change it. It's certain you must say it. If it's in something you must say, say it. Pay the price early and manage the consequences later. When I postpone inevitable choices, I pay dearly for them later. Some of the saddest things that have happened in my life is because there were choices I knew I had to make. There were decisions to make, but I didn't make them because for whatever reason. Number 40. This is a good one. Cheap is costly. Quality pays in the end. Cheap is costly. I've learned that lesson that, you know, when you want to do something, they say it costs so much, you know the price, and you start to cut corners and cut corners and cut corners. You do the cheaper version. Eventually, the cheaper version is not able to solve your problem. You go back and do the quality version, by which time you are paying both for the quality version and the cheaper version. Cheap is costly. Don't be cheap. If it has to be done, make sure you do it well right from the beginning. Because if you go step by step trying to do cheaper, 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 it costs you a lot. If you want to buy a shoe, save and buy a good shoe. Don't buy 10 cheap shoes. <laughs> 10 cheap, yeah, you may have 10 shoes in your wardrobe, but each one of them is talking. 
Each one has opened their mouth. Each one. There are ten of them. Because when you, you wear that shoe, you, you step and going forward, it leaves you behind. And cheap shoes are like that. Cheap everything is like that. Cheap furniture, cheap chair, cheap. Do things quality for once. And you don't have to come back doing them over and over and over again. I'd rather have one good shoe which can stand pressure <laughs> than five shoes that can stand pressure because all of them will leave you behind. Cheap is costly, but quality will pay in the end. Go for quality. And I'm not saying quality is always expensive, but go for quality. Not expensive, quality. Quality. Number 41. Investments that promise maximum profit for minimum eff effort are suspicious. After we've gone through R5, Piram, and all that, if you don't learn that lesson, you'll never be wise again. Anything that says, you just put in this much and you'll get ten times more, don't trust it. Don't trust it. It's suspicious. It's not going to work. Anybody who comes to tell you, pay this money and you're going to get that, and you look at it and it doesn't make sense, it simply means it doesn't make sense. Don't go for shortcuts, cheap ways, fast ways, quick investments, somebody who is doubling money, something that promises you great reward without any effort. It's suspicious. Unfortunately, human beings never learn this lesson. You know, when we had the Piram issue, when Piram collapsed, and everybody knew it had collapsed. Then there was another company called R5. And people went to invest in the R5. They thought, and it collapsed too. And then another one opened, I've forgotten the name. And people still invested. And it's not just a Ghanaian problem. Recently in America, it happened. Good old America. Mr. Madoff. Madoff with all their money. Number 42, 42 lesson that I've learned. If I can't get it now, I can wait for it. Tell yourself, if I can't get it now, I can wait for it. Say it again. If I can't get it now, I can wait for it. Don't act as if if you don't have it now, you will die. That was Esau's problem. If I don't get it now, I will die. You won't die. You will live. You will survive. You will move on. If you can get it, you can wait for it. Don't just let instant gratification drive everything that you want in life. You have to be patient. Sometimes to wait for things to happen. Sometimes you don't have it. There are many things I started life I didn't have. But just wait for it. And I've never, never been frustrated, resentful about things I don't have. Never. When I, I married my wife, we didn't have anything. We didn't even have chairs in the, in the, in the sitting room. Had to go to the church and borrow benches, benches that nobody was sitting on, just plain benches and paint them white just to glorify it a bit and put it in my sitting room. If you can't get it now, wait for it. It doesn't mean for life you'll be sitting on benches, but this is where you are at the bench state of life. There are stages in life. There is the bench stage and there is the sofa stage. If you are at the bench stage, stay there. You don't have it now, but wait for it. And if you are diligent and you continue pursuing your goals and working hard, the sofa stage will come. And don't put yourself down, berate yourself, look down on yourself. Good times are coming. Tell the person that's you, good times are coming. All right. Number 43. I have to really run. Little things add up to become really big things. I wish I could say a lot about this, but I can't. But little things really add up to become big things number 44 when i am with more mature people i must keep quiet listen and learn when you sit before people who know more than you do don't talk keep quiet listen and learn open your eyes open your ears learn from them don't show off don't brag about the little things you've achieved number 45 I know I'm running, but time is against me too. 45. My body is God's temple. 
I must keep it clean and exercise it. I can't say too much about it. Number 46. The second service is coming. I have to close the service. All right, number 46. I must treat the praise I receive like chewing gum. Chew on it a bit and spit it out. When people praise me, yes, it's good to, to get praise. And people say, oh, you've done this, you've done that, you've done that, you've done that. You chew on it. You get the sweet for the moment. But when it becomes routine, spit the gum out. You can't let praise stay in your head or in your mouth for a long time. It will begin to inflate your head. And in life, people are going to praise you. They're going to say nice things about you. Receive it, chew on it a little bit, and spit it out. Because you can't live your life on people's praises or on past glory. What you achieve today may not help you tomorrow. There will always be new challenges. But by all means, be encouraged by the praise you receive. But it's short term, chew on it, spit it out. I have three more to go. Four more, all right? Number 47, I owe my achievements in life to God's grace and the sacrifice of those who came before me. It's very easy for you to think you are the beginning of everything. Without you, nothing would have been done. But people came before you. By the way, that's the picture of my parents over there. They're looking handsome and beautiful. It's just about when they married. All right. So, I owe my achievements in life to God's grace and the sacrifice of those who came before me. There were people before you were here. The people who came ahead of time, the people who prepared the way for you, the people who sowed the seed, the people who made the investment, the people who read books that you have, you wrote books that you read, there are people who taught you in school, there are people who came and sacrificed in your field and never got anything and you came to reap. Most of the time we reap where others have sown. We reap where we have not sown. Don't take the credit for yourself. You only come, came at the last minute to enjoy the blessing. But for the grace of God and those who came ahead of you, you wouldn't be where you are today. Number 48. God is good even when I don't understand him. I will never understand everything about God, but I know he's good. He's faithful. His mercies endure forever. There's things that happen in your life, in my life, that, that doesn't make sense. And you wonder, where is God? Why is God allowing this to happen? But God is good whether I understand him or not. That's one constant I've come to know in life. There are very, very difficult things to understand. If you look at the whole world, there is evil happening. Things happen that you wonder, where was God? Why didn't God do something? But over time, I've come to realize God is always good. He turns even the evil to be good because his word assures us that he makes all things work together for our good. Not that everything is good, but he will make them work together for our good because we are called according to his purpose. Number 49. This is the opposite of what Muhammad Ali said. I am not the greatest. I think the older I get in life, the more I come to realize my own limitations. When you are younger, you think you have all the strength, you have all the wisdom, you are the best, there's nothing like you. Behind you, there's nothing. Before you, there's nothing. But as you grow older, you realize you're not the best, really. You're just doing what you can. You're doing your best, but you're not the best. You're not the greatest. There will always be people who excel in areas far better than you. I'm not the greatest, I'm not the greatest pastor, and I'm not trying to be the greatest pastor. I just want to be a servant of God, to do the will of God, to do what I have to do with all my heart, with all the passion, with the intensity that I have. But I cannot guarantee that that will make me better than somebody else. It will only make me acceptable before God. Because, you know, after all is done, when we stand before the Lord, He would not say, well done, thou good and great servant. He will not say, well done, the pastor of the largest church. He will not say, well done, oh, you who excel beyond everybody. You set records everywhere. The recommendation that he's going to be giving is, well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
So all you can do in life is to be good and be faithful. Be good and be faithful. That's all you want to do because that's what God expects from you. Not to be better than people, not to outstrip other people, not to be ahead of everybody, but just to be good and be faithful with what he has given to you. That's my 49th lesson. And my 50th, that's my signature tune, 50th lesson I've learned in life is that there is always hope for the future. There is always hope for the future. And that is what I believe with all my heart, that there is hope for the future. That when things are down, they can look better. That when you, can, you are out, you can be counted in. When people have counted you out, God can bring you in. When you are last, you can be first. When nobody expects much from you, God can do great things with you. When you don't have all the skills, God can give you opportunity. There's always hope for the future. Your story today is not the end of the story. Your experience today is not the end of your experience. What you've gone through today will not determine how your future will be. You may have come from the West environment, be born from the West family. You may not have had the best training, but there's always hope for the future. When we trust the Lord and we walk with him, he does new things with our lives. He takes us places that we never, ever dreamt we would go. I trust these 50 lessons uh, have been a blessing to you. And what I just want to encourage you is each one of you take time and write down your own lessons in life. What have you learned in life in your 10 years, 20 years, 40 years? If you are 70, you must learn a lot of lessons. If you are 80, what have you learned? What are the lessons that you treasure in your heart that will help you to live the rest of your life? Or lessons you can pass on to others to say, listen, this is what I've noticed about life and you can help, the, you can help other people with it. May God bless you, increase you, prosper you in all you do. Amen and amen. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you!